everyone, I'm Dr. Heath Robinson, and I've prepared this brief video to show you some of the worst mistakes that you can make with your maps. The ones that instantly identify you as an amateur, or worse, someone who really doesn't know what they're doing. Even though the result of every GIS analysis will not be communicated as a map, at least a very large percentage of them will, and the maps you produce reflect on you as a GIS professional. People are judged by their appearance. It may not be right and it may not be fair, but it is true, and the same applies to your maps. When you're giving a presentation or standing beside a poster, the people who walk by will not see all of the hopefully amazing GIS analysis that you put into generating your results. They will just see your maps, and they will make judgments about you, judgments about your analytical competence, and judgments about your overall quality simply by, often the very first impression, of your map. In this video, I have compiled the errors that I see all of the time on the web and with alarming frequency, even in print. I even see these errors when I'm at conferences in both the oral presentations and poster presentations. These errors can immediately signal that the person doesn't know what they're doing cartographically. And although the analysis they are presenting may still be rock solid, the red flags on the maps immediately cast doubt onto the quality of the analysis. Not making these mistakes and presenting maps with rock-solid cartography will go a long way to inspiring confidence in you and in your analysis. Here are the 10 items in no particular order. Number one, the map is in an incorrect projection. If the data shown on your map is not properly projected, then you're immediately not going to be taken seriously. I have seen more maps of the United States that look like this than I can count. Everyone who is a GIS professional knows what this is. It is a feature class that was stored in a three-dimensional coordinate system that is now being displayed as if the latitude and longitude can be mapped directly onto Y and X coordinates on a Cartesian plane. Very unfortunately, this is sometimes called unprojected, and sometimes you even see someone write projection unprojected on a map. But any systematic conversion of spherical coordinates to a Cartesian plane is a projection, and so this must in reality be projected in some way, and thus the term unprojected is a misnomer. However, it is almost certainly not the projection that correctly and most clearly displays your data. Without the proper projection, the map can very easily be simply wrong. By the way, another dead giveaway here is if at the bottom of the map it says projection WGS84 or projection NAD83. That means the person knows just enough to be very dangerous. They have had just enough training to know that they need to report the projection information on maps, but not enough to know that WGS84 and NAD83 are not projections. Number two. There are underscores in the projection information and everywhere else. As soon as you see underscores in projection information, coordinate systems, and so forth, you immediately know that the person has simply copied and pasted whatever was found in the properties of a shapefile, feature class, or perhaps the data frame in ArcGIS. They think that by copying exactly what was there, they are doing a good job by accurately reporting something about the map. But the reality is the underscores are unnecessary. USA underscore contiguous underscore Lambert underscore conformal underscore conic is not the name of a projection. It's just the Lambert conformal conic projection. Similarly, if you need to refer to the North American datum of 1983, write the North American datum of 1983, not GCS underscore North underscore American underscore 1983. By the way, that USA underscore contiguous part is just telling you that particular file's projection parameters are supposed to be optimized for the contiguous United States. In ArcMap's case, this means a central meridian at 96 degrees west and standard parallels of 33 degrees north and 45 degrees north. By the way, you should know that's not something that is necessarily standardized between GIS packages. This should be used as a starting point from which to optimize the projection for your own purposes. It is not a whole new kind of projection, so don't include USA underscore contiguous. If your central meridian and standard parallels are optimized for the map, as they should be, just report them. 
Also, please don't include underscores in things such as latitude underscore of underscore origin or standard underscore parallel underscore one. Just write the words out. Number three, the map uses the ArcGIS Goldenrod color ramp for choropleth mapping. This color ramp has been the default color ramp in ArcGIS for choropleth mapping for a very long time. Everyone has seen hundreds of maps that use this color scheme. Everyone knows that when they see this color ramp, the map was created in ArcGIS and that the person took no time in selecting an appropriate color scheme for the map. Since the person used the default color ramp, the audience immediately begins to wonder what other default settings were used in the analysis that probably should not have been. I recommend never using this color scheme. Instead, pick up a book on choropleth mapping and colors and cartography and make a deliberate and informed choice about your color scheme. Number four, the map has an Esri default north arrow. If you go to a conference and give a presentation, you will see this north arrow about 500 times. Do you really want to show it for the 501st? No. Just as with the goldenrod color ramp, this north arrow communicates that you just took the default, and again, you don't want to convey to your audience that you are the kind of person who just accepts the defaults. Instead, use even a simple custom-drawn north arrow. This will communicate that you are a person who thinks about details. Number five, the map's representative fraction or scale bar uses numbers that are odd or fractional values. Why would someone deliberately create a map to the scale of 1 to 645,287.78307? Worse, even in those situations where it might be necessary, why would that information be communicated in a representative fraction and not a nice and neat scale bar with round numbers? And when a scale bar, also called a graphic scale, is used to communicate scale information, don't make the scale bar run to 7.7 .7 miles or 8.57 kilometers or 1,578 kilometers. It just doesn't make sense. Those are not numbers that people cognitively understand. Seeing these kinds of scales on maps demonstrates that the person knows enough about maps to know that there needs to be a scale, but just enough to think that default scales auto-generated by the software package automatically creates an acceptable scale. It does not. Number six, the map uses the wrong kind of thematic map to show the data. Choropleth maps, dot density maps, proportional symbol maps, flow maps, and cartograms all have different kinds of data that they can show correctly. At least a rudimentary knowledge of each is necessary to ensure that the data you are trying to map is of an acceptable kind for the thematic mapping technique employed. The most egregious errors include mapping quantitative data on a choropleth map that uses different hues or colors instead of shades of the same color, mapping qualitative data on a choropleth map using shades of the same color rather than different hues, mapping densities with proportional symbol maps, or using densities to figure the total number of dots that should be on a dot density map rather than total values. Number seven, latitude and longitude are reported as if they were Cartesian grid coordinates. Latitude and longitude can be reported in degrees minute seconds format, DMS, or in decimal degree format, DD. But in both cases, latitude is given first and then longitude. It is true that for whatever reasons, some GIS programs want you to enter, or they report, latitude and longitude as if they were Cartesian grid coordinates. This is unfortunate and runs counter to geographic convention. Sometimes we have to work around that when we're working to input data into certain software or perform some kind of data manipulation. But that doesn't mean that we should be sloppy when reporting coordinates, especially on finished maps. Lately, I've even seen instances where people have dropped the compass direction from the coordinates and just used negative and positive numbers, such as negative 47.7896, 34.5689. This is completely confusing because it assumes that people understand the method you are using to report coordinates. That might be what your software package reports, but you need to convert that into a standard format for public consumption. 
No one knows what software package you are using, and you cannot assume that even if you tell them, the audience knows the way that package reports coordinates, especially if that software package reports them differently from geographic convention. I encourage you to use degrees, minutes, seconds format on final maps because I think it shows that you are able to understand the coordinates the software gives you and are able to convert them into the formal system that follows the geographic convention. But even if you do use the decimal degree format, make sure that all of the necessary information is present, all of the geographic standards have been followed, and that you clearly and unambiguously communicate the coordinates. Number 8. The insets are in the same projection as the main map. Often this can simply very straightforwardly mean that your inset, and thus your map, is incorrect. But besides that, it also looks like the person who made the map is trying to cut corners. For example, even if you have a projection that has been optimized for the contiguous United States, which looks reasonable, but the insets of Alaska and Hawaii look all distorted, it's a dead giveaway that the projections of the insets were not optimized for the regions they show. The person who drew the map seems to know they needed to use a projection, but didn't know enough to make sure their insets were also correct. Number 9. The use of space is terrible. Cartography is partly an art. The map has to be scientifically correct, of course, but the cartographer also has a responsibility to learn about map composition and the use of space. This includes understanding positive space and negative space, and creating something that is aesthetically pleasing. There's lots of material out there on map design, and even the way a person's eyes flow across a map when they first pick it up to look it over. In order to create effective maps, you need to use this information and at least be able to create a map that looks nice. And finally, number 10. The map is not optimized for the medium in which it is shown. It is very, very seldom going to be the case that you can use the same map in a print publication, on a poster, on the web, and for a PowerPoint presentation. Unfortunately, you see people all of the time that only have created a single map and are trying to shoehorn it into all of these different circumstances. A map should be designed specifically for the particular medium in which it will appear. I wish I had a nickel for every time I saw a presentation where the presenter put a map on the projector that I could not read. Sometimes the presenter will even make a statement like, Now I know you cannot see this, or I know this is hard to read, and I'm not sure which is worse, mentioning it or not. If the presenter doesn't mention it, then the audience thinks he or she is oblivious to the fact that they cannot read the map, and obliviousness is not a quality you want to convey. If the presenter does comment that he or she knows it can't be seen, the audience immediately wonders why the person came to deliver information in a presentation format, designed maps that he or she knew cannot be read by the audience, and then used them anyway. Why would that person not have taken the time to redraft the maps so that they would be understandable, legible, and communicate the information that was intended? That would have demonstrated professionalism. So, in closing, always remember that a map is for communicating information. If it's not doing that, it's not effective. Okay, well that's it. I hope that you will take what you've learned from this video and apply it to your own cartography. I wish you the best of luck in everything you do.